Hey everybody, welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. Today we are talking about going from grief to great after divorce. And I have a special guest on today. And some of the tips that she's going to give us is the freedom that comes with forgiveness, the superpower that gratitude is, and the importance of really celebrating your life. So welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. I'm your host, Nicole Simonin, and I help women over 40 lose weight for the last time. I work with women who are done with diets. They wanna feel relaxed and calm around food. They wanna gain back time and energy instead of obsessing about every little thing they put in their mouths. I know, I've been there. Women who want to exercise by doing activities that they love to do and wanna be more fit because it enhances their everyday activities and none of us are getting any younger. We wanna be able to open those spaghetti jars and cans or whatever you're eating when you're 90, right? So if you're ready to eat the foods that you love, do the activities that you want to do and are really ready to understand why you're doing the things that you're doing that are sabotaging your weight loss efforts, there is an easier way to lose weight. And I would love to show you how. So I want to invite you to schedule your discovery call today. On your call, share everything that you have tried, everything that you're frustrated with, and tell me what you really want to see happen with your, your body, your life, everything. I'm going to point out some blind spots that you're missing. And then we're going to talk about what it would be like to work together. And regardless of whether we work together or not, you are going to leave that call with so much more insight on what to do next. So you can schedule your call today at shapeitupfitness.com slash call. All right. So let's dive into today's topic, going from grief to great after divorce. My special guest today empowers women to overcome the fear, grief, and rejection of divorce to heal and create a fabulous bonus life. My guest is a 35-year fitness, nutrition, lifestyle, and wellness expert, has appeared on all of the major networks, and is a three-time best-selling author and has spoken on stages internationally. So welcome, Kelly Calabrese, to the show. Oh, Nicole, thanks for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Good. Um, And I am so honored that you're on the show because I feel like I've grown up with you in a way. And I don't know if I'm older than you or not, which is kind of weird, but (laughs) I'd say I'm older. (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm 48. So you don't have to share your age, but we're probably closer in age. I'm 52. Um, (laughs) I don't mind. (laughs) Yeah. So um, tell everyone a little bit about yourself and how you got started in your business that you're doing today. Yeah, I really knew early on what I wanted to do. In fact, I was 13 when I wrote in my little diary, I will be an exercise therapist. And I really didn't know what that meant. I just knew I was really happy when I was running, dancing, jumping, swimming, cheerleading, softball. You know, I loved all of that and went on to have a really blessed career, got all the advanced degrees and certifications and owned health clubs and managed corporate fitness centers and it's just been so fun. And I thought I had it all together. I thought I was living the dream, you know, beautiful estate home on a golf course, adoring husband, healthy kids, lots of friends, revered in my industry. And my turning point moment, which shifted my career was when my husband of 24 years came home and said, my commitment to our marriage is zero. So it sent me on my own personal journey of really healing from the emotion, the the, everything. I mean, you can't separate the physical, the spiritual, the emotional. That all happens when you have that kind of um, really life event that goes on. And so then in my own quest to become healthy, I did get certified as a divorce coach for myself. But once I got on the other side and got healthy again, I really felt compelled to help other women go from grief to great. Yeah, I really feel like anyone that does coaching or anything, it usually comes from like an experience that you personally went through. And I love that because it's like, you're your first client, you know, you, you went through it and you can really relate and understand what people are going through. Um, and also I have to, I was 13 when I declared what I was going to do. Um, and I wanted to be a professional ballet dancer and I did that in the first half of my life. Um, so that's interesting. Yeah. So all you parents out there that are listening to your 13 year olds (laughs) say they want to be an astronaut or something, don't dismiss it. (laughs) So let's dive into today's topic. So let you start with what, uh, talk about the freedom that comes with forgiveness. 
Yeah. So in my journey to healing, you know, I knew forgiveness was part of it. And I had said the words, I forgive him, but I knew that I hadn't really <laughs> forgiven him because there would be these triggers that would come along and be like, oh, I just knew that thorn was still in my side. And so I decided one weekend that I was going to sit down and I was not going to leave that weekend until I was free from this just bitterness and anger and resentment and rejection. And so I read a book called Forgiving Forward, and it really opened my eyes and helped me peel back the layers. And what I realized was it wasn't so much between my former husband and I as it was forgiveness for myself. And so the power of self-forgiveness was huge because I was feeling like a failure. I was holding my own feet to the fire, burning myself. And at some point you're like, okay, I'm punishing myself. This is ridiculous. This doesn't make any sense at all. And so when I was able to forgive myself, because you have to own your part in whatever happened as well, it's never 100% them and 0% you, but owning that, but then really releasing it and what it did was it gave me such peace that I left that weekend with that stayed with me that I now can live a life of what I call pre-forgiveness. So I go out into my day already pre-deciding that I'm not going to be someone who's so easily offendable. Of course, I'm going to do my part not to offend someone else, but I'm not going to let every little thing offend me. Like I want to live where... I'm just not falling as hard, as deep, or long, or as fast when something does happen, because stuff is going to happen again, whether it's someone just cut you off, or someone at work is, you know, just pouring something on you that had nothing to do with you. A lot of times it's about them. So really blessing people and forgiving them and not being offendable. So it completely shifted everything for me. Yeah, I don't remember exactly when it was that I learned that, you know, when you forgive, it's not so much you're forgiving the person, but it's really for like the forgiveness is for you. So you can move on and not carry that because, um, you know, a, a divorce definitely is a big impact on life. And I can totally see where, you know, that would be like, well, it was his fault or, you know, and blame and all that. But like, even on smaller levels, you know, um, if somebody, says something to you or is mean to you or does, you know, hits you or something like that, like you holding on to that, it just eats you away. And like the other person could be absolutely fine, you know, and like not even realize that like they did that to you, quote unquote, because nobody can do anything to you other than, you know, physically. But um, yeah, and just understanding that, like, you know, when you forgive, it's, it's really, it's for you. It's not for the other person. It is. And it doesn't mean you need to necessarily forget or that it doesn't hurt or they, they were right. right. That's not what it's about at all. Like if someone steps on your foot, you forgive them, but you're still going to limp a little bit. Like you're still going to feel the pain. <laughs> right. So um, it doesn't mean anything about the other person that it's, you know, condoned. And sometimes awful things happen, especially when I work yeah. with divorced women. I mean, horrible things have happened. We're not dismissing it. We're not saying, no, you know, pretend all. anything. Yeah about it, but it's the forgiveness where you're getting freedom to as much as you're getting freedom from. So mm. you're freeing yourself to a future where there can be peace and love and light, and you're not carrying that resentment. And it's almost like when someone reacts so horrifically to something that was really small and you're like, okay, that one little thing set you off. Like there's, there's a lot of other deep stuff in there that you yeah. have not dealt with because <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. So we want to get rid of that so that when something happens, it matches your response or it's even less. You're like, you know what? I'm just going to stay at peace and calm. That's not really a big deal in the big picture. Yeah. Yeah. Because, um, and I know you can speak to this too, for like weight loss and fitness. I mean, when you're carrying around that stress, that the cortisol levels go up and it's just, it wreaks havoc on your, on your body, just in general, physically, because you're just carrying around that, that burden that, you know time to let it go. But yeah. So talk about the superpower 
That is gratitude. Of gratitude. Yes. So one of the things on my journey that I realized was that you have to start somewhere with gratitude. Because if you sit there and you're thinking about your sad story and how unfair and unjust and all that it was, at some point you have to turn it around. So an easy way in a way that everyone can do is with gratitude. Because even if you're listening to this, you have technology, you've got a computer, you've got Wi-Fi, you got something. So start somewhere. And I decided about a year and a half ago that I wasn't going to go to bed until I feel a page with gratitude from that day. And it started out really mechanical where it was like, well, I took my vitamins, I walked the dog. And, but then I started going throughout my day thinking, okay, you're going to have to fill that page. tonight. Like you better be on the lookout for things to be grateful for all day long. And it just was this shift where I was like, wow, I don't get, not everyone gets to be in a podcast with Nicole. Like my goodness, what an incredible (laughs) blessing this is. And who knows who might hear it and how they might be positively impacted by it. And Before I knew it, things just started to come to me because I was grateful and I was looking for things and I actually started to track them and put a dollar amount on them. Like, wow, you know, my friend bought me soup at lunch today and oh my goodness, my friend just dropped a book off. They know I love books and, you know, someone invited me somewhere and paid for my ticket. And so I started to like, wow, it's because I'm carrying this attitude of gratitude that I'm so grateful for everything. And it doesn't mean I'm not generous and don't buy people things or that I'm necessarily keeping score, but I just started to get so thankful for everything. And when you're in this posture or position of looking for what's good about this situation, even when it's something bad, you can find something really good to be thankful for because you're not losing your learning. Yeah. I, um, a lot of people, cause I talk a lot about mindset and, um, you know, but kind of not necessarily putting a positive spin on everything. And I think a lot of people think I'm like, you know, just happy Pollyanna thoughts. And that's not really what it's about. And I love that you brought up the gratitude because it's not just writing down all the gratitudes and and having lip service to it. It's like really feeling it. And I think, um, I know I've done gratitude, um, journals as well. And it's like the first couple are like, eh, like, they're just kind of like, I love my pen. (laughs) I'm grateful for this, you know, but then as you get deeper and deeper, there's something that connects you to like, you know, I don't know if you're spiritual or religious, but, um, there's just something that like takes a hold of you and you're like, wow, I mean, I'm really have a lot to be thankful for. And you're right. If anybody is listening to this podcast, you have running water, I'm assuming you have, you know, you have the technologies and advances that are available. Um, I don't know who is credited with, I want to say it was Tony Robbins, but, um, and I'm going to mess up the quote, but, and I don't know if you've heard it, but like when you're really down and in sad and unhappy, um, the best advice was to go help somebody else. Because once you go help somebody else, you're in a different space, kind of like what you're saying with the gratitude, it just it shifts you out of that um, negativity and like, you know, and, and not so isolated, because we're all in this together, you know, we're all on this planet, and we're all connected somehow, and reaching out to other people. I mean, I just think that elevates our moods and and just helps us to become better versions of ourselves, you know? I agree. Yeah. Serving is such a great thing to do when you're feeling down. I've done it many times. I'd be sitting there just having a little pity party. I'm like, you know what? You do not have to go out and look far to see someone who has it way worse off than you do. And it doesn't necessarily mean financially. It could be someone who's poor in spirit or just needs encouragement. And so I did quite a bit of going out and serving and it helped me to realize, you know, how blessed and how grateful that I needed to be for my life. You know, when you get fresh, my kids are in college. And so when you get frustrated with your college kid and you're like, okay, they're still in school there, you know, you're, you're looking for things like, okay, well, it's not bad. There's something good about this. Yeah. And I, I don't know, but like, why do you, why do people want to be miserable for the rest of their lives? Like, wouldn't you rather be happy <laughs> and like, yes, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about um, the last point, the importance of celebrating your life. Yeah. Speaking of being happy, I mean, in the world, there's going to be trouble. There's going to be struggle. There's going to be hard things. Anyone who's lived any amount of time knows that, but it's not all struggle and hard and we can still have joy and we can still be happy. And for the people who don't celebrate, they burn out. They just go from thing to thing to thing. There's no recognition. There's no celebration. You're just robbing yourself of feeling good And you're also just creating this habit of never being happy, never celebrating, and you're going to eventually feel empty and just negative. 
And so that's why it's important to celebrate because you're doing something to getting closer to your dreams. You're acknowledging like, wow, I did, you know, finish that chapter of the book or I did complete whatever, um, you know, whether it's nutrition, fitness, I, I did well on my meal plan this week. I meal prepped. I, yes, let's celebrate that. Keep a success journal. So when you're having those moments where you're like, oh, you know, I don't really know. I'm feeling down. Am I really doing anything? Am I making a difference? Am I making progress? Go back, you know, track. That's why we track, you know, things like food and, and movement. Um when you celebrate, bring other people into it because now they can be a part of it. Now you're bringing more energy, more power, and people can celebrate with you and others want to join in and, you know, be spontaneous too. plan things. If you don't plan them, they're not going to happen. And then you'll be sad. So plan your own parties if you have to, and then be spontaneous. Success is really a mindset and it does give you that endorphin rush, just like exercise does. And those emotions create habits. So then you're constantly looking for ways to celebrate others as well. It's not just about celebrating you, but wow, every day there's got to be something to celebrate. Don't let it all be hard. Even at times where, you know, we're still in a pandemic and all of that, there's got to be something good that you can find about your situation. Yeah. And I think for people that are just kind of starting in this, like if you're really down, I mean, sometimes it's hard to like reach for anything, you know, um, I can't remember who it was, but I was reading a book and they were do talking about gratitude and they were writing, they were grateful for their pencil. They were grateful for the paper. And as they kept going, they were saying something about like, um, they're grateful for the eraser on the pen because they or pencil, because they could, um, erase their suicide note. Like, I mean, it was deep. And I was like, wow, that's, that's a lot like, but you, you can be grateful for your pencil and, and the celebrating the small wins. I love that too, because, you know, I think in our society, we always look at like the big things, the highlight reels, the, the Instagram, you know, posts that are like over the top. And, you know, if just getting out of bed is a struggle and you got out of bed and, and, you know, maybe put on some clothes, celebrate that. Like, don't, don't allow those little things, those what we consider mundane to slip by really embrace every little moment, because I think that's what life, you know, is made up of. You, you, if you focus too much on all the, the stuff that's going on, that's quote unquote wrong or shouldn't be happening. You know um, it just, it, our brain likes to gather whatever we're thinking about. So if you're going to think about a negative thing, it's going to gather like 10 or 20 other negative things. But if you think of a positive thing, it's going to do the same thing. So why not use that to our advantage for sure? One of the exercises that I do with my clients, I mean, when you're going through a divorce, there's a lot of hard things and you could really be depressed and just feel overwhelmed and emotional. And I always say, when you're feeling that, ask yourself the question, what's good about this? And sometimes it's hard, but there are good things about being single again. Like you don't have to compromise anything. You get to decide the temperature in the house, when you go to bed, what you eat, when you eat, you know, all of that stuff, you get to have a fresh start, a clean slate. That means, you know, new friends, you can pursue that hobby. There's no reason you can't be in the best shape of your life right now. And, you know, you may have to get forced outside of your comfort zone and meet new people or get a new job or move your house. And, you know, if you're with your kids, it could be quality parenting time over quantity and, your house might be so peaceful now, or maybe before there was fighting and anger and, and even abuse. And it's a great time for self-development and, you know, really be, get to know yourself, become this whole you that you maybe didn't even get to know before because you were so busy or unhappy. And we talked about yeah. serving and pursuing passions. And so if you can just ask yourself that question when it seems hard, like, okay, well, what is good about this? And start somewhere. Like you said, I have a pen. Okay, it's pen, I have paper, pen's got an eraser. Like start, start with some place and then momentum will pick up and it will get you out of that lowest level of victim energy where you feel like the world is mm. happening to me and there's nothing I can do about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think too, you know, in our generation, you know, divorce was really frowned upon back then. And as we're evolving, you know, it's not such a stigma, but um, I think it's interesting because I have a relative who uh, who's close to me, who's divorced. And, you know, it's like they, you don't hear about the, the good side of divorce of being able to do whatever you want and not having to have somebody else's opinion interject in there. And, you know, and the, if your kids are younger, it's like the every other weekend, you know, that kind of thing. And looking at that, um, 
you know, there, there's always a silver lining to whatever is going on, no matter what it is. I love the saying, um, it's not happening to me, it's happening for me. And if you take that with you, listeners, <laughs> it shifts everything. If you just are like, this is happening for me, figure out why it's happening for you. Um, yeah. So you have a special offer for people who are listening. You want to share that? I do. So one of my latest bestselling books is called Success Habits of Super Achievers. And this book compiles over 80 stories of ordinary people just like us that something extraordinary difficult happened to. And they chose to be resilient. They chose to get back up and have the courage to not only overcome it, but really to do something extraordinary with it and give back and do something really meaningful. So what I recommend is people read one chapter a day. It's only a couple of pages, but when you read these stories, you'll be like, wow, if they could overcome and do that, then I can do something great with my day. And it's really meant to give you hope and encouragement. And some stories you'll really connect with and other stories you'll be like, wow, this is you know, just impressive. So they can go to my website. It's Kelly with an I calibrice.com. And it says a free ebook. So they can get the electronic copy of the book there. Um, if they want to get a hard copy, if they love it, I will um, just give it to them for the cost and I will ship it to them in the U S for free. And I will personally sign it. So um, they just have to pay for the cost of the book, which I think is like, I don't know, 1295 or something. Yeah. 1295. Yeah. <laughs> That is incredible. Yeah. And if you missed any of the links, they will be in the show notes for sure. You can also find it on my website, um, shapeitupfitness.com under this episode as well. All right. So it's everyone's favorite time, but as I jokingly say, not necessarily the, uh, the guests favorite time. <laughs> kind of well, let's have spot. fun. <laughs> All right. So let's start off really easy coffee or tea. 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 Okay. Did you have a favorite TV show growing up? Three's Company. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> so I, so when I was little, I was not allowed to watch that show. When, yeah, no, when, I can't yeah. believe my parents did. <laughs> <laughs> so what would, I would do is, um, I was, I guess they call a latchkey kid uh, nowadays, but like I would come home and my mom, my dad worked like literally a, a a building away because he had a store, but I would turn on three's company, mom and dad, if you're listening, it's okay. <laughs> but I would turn on three's company and I would watch it until I saw her pull up and like start walking up to the door and I'd run up. And of course we didn't have remotes back then, <laughs> you know, and turn it off and be like, hi, <laughs> not doing That's anything. Funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what was your first job? I'm sorry. My first job. Job. Mm -hmm. um, my parents owned a deli. So I worked in their deli when I was little, little. Yeah. We have a lot in common. That was what my dad had. He had a deli. Um, okay. Well, you're from New Jersey originally. Were you yes. here when Wawa was? Yes. Okay. So imagine a, a smaller version of Wawa where we had um, pizza, ice cream, subs. We sold um, rented VHS tapes. Uh -huh. That's how old I am. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Did you like working in the deli? I did. They had delis, restaurants, and pizzerias. So I, I worked in all of them. And then when I was 17 and got my license, the first place I drove was a health club. So that was really my first job. And obviously that shaped my whole life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, um, I never liked, um, working in the deli because I would come home smelling like onions. Yeah. This, bologna. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And to this day, I do not like pickles. I just, I don't know what it is about pickles. Like I, I have not eat. been in a deli in a year. I don't even know the last time I've been in it. I don't eat any sandwiches at all. <laughs> None. Yeah. I'm <laughs> it's not been a 30 fan. years since I've had a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan of them either. Um, traumatized as children probably. <laughs> so <laughs> if you could have any new skill instantaneously, what would it be? Speak another language. Oh, any particular language? Italian. Okay. Now, wait, are you a, a, Italian? Yes. Okay. I, I speak some, but it'd be really nice to be fluent. Oh, that's cool. One of my um, goals in my golden year bucket list is to learn a language. Um, I prefer French, but um, yeah, I think Italian and French are pretty close to each other as far as, yes, so I've been told. <laughs> Awesome. All right. So any takeaway you want to leave with the audience before we wrap everything up? 
Um, I would say the lens that I look through life with is to let love win. That's kind of the barometer that I use in all situations, whether it's a big decision or a small decision, just how can I leave someone's presence feeling like love won, that they are somehow better off because we connected. So that's just something that I try and use that kind of makes light of situations and hopefully makes for great outcomes. That's awesome. Well, us meeting on this podcast has definitely been that for me. And I'm sure for all the listeners who are listening or watching, because we are on YouTube as well. So thank you, Kelly, so much for coming on and sharing your wisdom with everybody. And um, like I said, if you want to get in touch with Kelly, I will leave the links in the show notes. So Kelly, thank you so much for being on today. Thank you, Nicole. And thanks for bringing the show to the world. The world needs it. I love the whole concept. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody. That is a wrap for today. And I will talk to you next week.